Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is AMA number eight. Today, we're going to go through a bunch of the tips and tricks that I use when constructing things in the VAB. Create a checklist and use it for everything you build. Add one extra battery somewhere on your craft, but disable it so that if you run out of power at any point, you can go and enable that battery to recover your craft. If you're having trouble getting something to stick because it wants to do a surface attachment, hold down the Alt key and it will disable surface attachment allowing it to connect on just the node. Holding down Control as you left click on a part will take you to that part in your parts list as well as show you a pop-up of the stats for it right there, just as if you were mousing over that part in the parts list. Open everything that you can in the VAB to look at whether it clips into things, do solar panels, satellite dishes, move your robotics, open your antenna. If it animates, animate it. Look at it in the VAB before you have it up in orbit and it's too late to fix anything that might be colliding. This is especially true with things like landing legs. You want to make sure that they're actually going to provide enough clearance for landing and make sure that if you have engines down below that the legs are going to hit the ground before the engine does. Also, you can use the bottom of the VAB to imagine what it would look like if your craft were landed to see what is going to touch the ground. Add retro rockets to things that you're going to be decoupling to make sure that they don't come back and hit your craft. You can put a couple at the top like right here and right here, both pointing in the same direction to force the stage when it decouples to shift off to one side like this. Attach retro boosters pointed sideways to thrust side attached parts off. When you're going to attach things in symmetry that have multiple parts, build one of them completely first with symmetry turned off. Attach all the things you want to it, then turn symmetry on to attach as many as you want and they'll all be copies of each other. Hold down shift before you left click and you'll grab any part and be able to move everything all at once. Use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out and be able to go and look inside your craft, especially if you have cargo bays. If the camera doesn't go in far enough to see inside the cargo bay, use the shift click trick to grab the whole craft and slide it sideways on the screen. Bring it closer to the camera and then you'll be able to scroll in and look back inside those cargo bays. If you want to make a sub-assembly but you didn't root your part correctly, reroute the craft to some other part and then you can save off your sub-assembly. You can also make a complete copy of a whole section of parts by holding down the Alt key before left-clicking on that section. Add some helpful construction mods like MechJeb for Delta V windows, RCS build aid to see where your RCS is balanced, tweak scale to modify part sizes, tweakable everything to gain access to tweakables that normally aren't in stock, module manager so that you can make changes to different parts, fuse box to see if you have enough power, resource overview for a handy window showing your totals of all resources, and despite it saying development stopped, this is not stopped. The UBO Zer welding tool is still in operation. If you're having trouble getting something attached like a fuel line or a strut between two parts, put something long that you can surface attach on the side of one thing, attach what you're trying to strut or fuel line to to the other end, put the strut or fuel line on, then pull the thing out of the middle and reattach your struts or fuel lines will stay connected. Really large payloads will make your whole rocket shake as you're launching, so use a fairing and attach struts to it. You zoom inside the fairing, attach one end point, zoom outside the fairing, attach the other end point, and then if you zoom back in, you'll see that the strut is attached. Do this for both sides of your payload. Do it up high and do it down low if you have a really long one as well. Struts only exist at one side, the side that you attach first. If you don't want ugly strut endpoints attached to your payloads, begin the strut from something that is going to decouple and be discarded. End your connection on your payload. 
In the case of a fairing, it can be really hard to do that. So if you really don't want to have endpoints on your payload, then you need to do something like this to get the strut attached to the fairing. Put on a plate, extend it away, attach the strut starting with the plate, run it to your payload, then move the plate to the fairing. You can use tweak scale to size it down until it disappears. When you have a part that does not surface attach, but you want to turn it sideways and essentially surface attach it to something, you can take something like a, a beam or a cubic octagonal strut, rotate it so that it disappears inside the craft, and it will leave behind a connection node that you can then attach to. This technique works really well when you want to put multiple engines on the bottom of something, but the engines don't normally surface attach. This is another good place to use the technique where you build one of something before you then copy it or switch into a symmetry mode to put multiple copies of something on. And once you have them in place like this, if you want to cover up the ugly bottoms, you can just scale up a plate of some kind to put it over that base. Also note that if you're having trouble getting something to stick, try moving your camera around and attempt to make the connection from other angles. Use action groups and set them in the order that you want to use them. Usually because I'm using remote tech, I want to put out my antenna first. So that goes on group one. When I get to orbit, I then want to put out my solar panels. That goes on group two. Sometimes I've disabled my RCS jets on the payload and I want to get them activated after the payload has been decoupled. That might go on group two or group three, depending upon where I want it to appear relative to the solar panels. Whatever it is, just come up with a system that makes sense to you and have it go in the order that you're going to use them. When you're in the VAB or the SPH, you can turn on your center of mass indicator. And then when you flip on your center of thrust indicator, you can line that up by making tweaks to the engines around the perimeter of your lander to make sure that that thrust goes through the center. That way it will be balanced when you're trying to land especially with asymmetric payloads like this one here. But you have to remember to flip it so that the engines are pointing toward the ceiling. The reason for that is in the VAB, it's assumed that the direction of travel is toward the ceiling. Normally that's true for rockets, but in the case of a lander, you have to flip it over. It's also true if you're dealing with re-entry vehicles. You want your re-entry vehicle to be upside down so you can have an idea of how it's going to re-enter because that's the direction of travel. In the SPH, the direction of travel is toward the doors because it's assumed that in there you're making airplanes. Try right-clicking on every part you can get your hands on, especially if you've installed the Tweakable Everything mod, because you'll be surprised sometimes at all the little buttons and sliders that are available to you from different mods or from the Tweakable Everything. Test everything here at the launch pad before you take it someplace else and find that it doesn't work. Try getting out of your capsule. Make sure you don't have a hatches obstructed problem. Make sure you can go up and down the ladders. By pressing Alt F12, you can get a debug menu that allows you to turn off gravity temporarily. You can hack the fuel to get infinite fuel in order to put you a little higher in the air so that you can then turn off the hack gravity cheat and drop your capsule for a parachute test. Because you never know when you're going to find out that something didn't work the way that you were hoping it would. Pay attention to decouplers. The direction that the arrow is pointing is the direction that the payload is going to be ejected from. In the case of these blue ones, they're going to decouple from both sides at the same time and this part will be left floating. Pay attention to your docking nodes. This is a docking node. This, even though it looks like a docking node, is not. You need to have two of these to be able to dock something and they need to connect those two points right there. Also, this right here is not a docking node either. This is just a surface attachment point. When you radially attach a docking port, don't put it upside down. It goes like this. Docking ports need to be the same size to connect to each other. So these need two small ones. These are two middles. This would require two big ones. These will not all interchange with each other. You can attach a docking port to something that's not a docking port as long as you realize that once you undock this, you are not going to be able to redock it later. 
Connection nodes have different sizes. See this one here has a big node at the top, a bigger node at the bottom, and a little node in the middle. The node size and the mass of the part determine the strength of the connection. Using things with bigger nodes and higher mass will make them connect better. Also, sometimes there may be multiple nodes near a location where you're trying to connect. If you look at this part right here, see right under my mouse, there's a node inside that part, and that node is what is supposed to be connecting to this engine. But this little node right here might try to go to this one right there in the middle of this. So sometimes to prevent things like that, you need to occupy the node that's getting in the way. Attaching this beam will do that. Now I can attach this and it won't be interfered with as it's getting all connected up. After that's done, you can take the part back off that you used to block that node. Now the node is still there and that's good because in my case, I'm supposed to use that node right there to connect to my decoupler to that node that you can see down in the decoupler right there. And so then this goes on like that over the whole thing. When you're putting on a fairing, don't use symmetry. Sometimes you're going to want to go back into your fairing to look at it, and it's easier to just pull one side off. And last but not least for this episode, lights. Everything looks better with more lights. There are many tips and tricks, but this video is already twice the length of a normal turbo time, so... Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.